Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about Data Warehouse or Warehouse in short in Microsoft Fabric. What is it, uh, how you can use it, how it is different with Lake House on Power BI Data Mart on some parts, but this is not a video specifically about the differences. This is mainly a video about Data Warehouse and Warehouse in Microsoft Fabric. Let's check it out. So let's start with what is a warehouse or uh, fabric data warehouse. So um, you can call it Microsoft Fabric Data Warehouse or you can call it Microsoft Fabric Warehouse um, or in short, basically just warehouse. So Microsoft Fabric is an end-to-end -end, uh, solution for data analytics um, provided by Microsoft announced last week in Microsoft Build, which has um, different workloads, a workload for data engineering, for data integration, for data storage, uh, also a workload for data warehousing, which warehouse or data warehouse is one of the objects in that Workload, workload in the data uh, in, in the data warehousing workload. The data warehousing workload comes from Azure Synapse. So basically, what the data warehouse in Fabric is is Synapse data warehouse with some additional changes, of course, uh, that makes it Fabric oriented. So if you want to learn more about Microsoft Fabric, go and watch my other videos and how to enable it in your tenant so that you can go and start with it. Uh, when you have Microsoft Fabric in your environment, then you can create this object called Warehouse. So Warehouse is a um, database system, let's call it this way, a database system that has a really high performance engine behind the scene that works on really um, um, uh, high performance and, and provide a good fast responding query uh, to large volumes of data. Um, and uh, you can interact with it like a database, like you can write SQL commands uh, to write data into it or SQL commands to get data from it. And of course, tools such as Power BI can also get data from it. So essentially, it's like a database system that is really high performant. It's not like Azure SQL database. It's, uh, um, it's performing better than that. Um, it is coming from Synapse Data Warehouse. Uh, the term Data Warehouse itself comes from uh, outside of Microsoft. Of course, the term of Data Warehouse is essentially focusing on a data storage that can hold the analytical database, which is different from transactional database. Transactional database is normalized, is where you store your tables that are defined in the, one of the normalization forms versus a, a data warehouse is a place for your dimensional data, for your star schema model that can sit in a normal Azure SQL database or it can sit in data warehouse or um, Marks of Fabric Warehouse, of course. If it is sitting here, then you have a really high performance engine behind the scene. So that performance of the engine behind the scene is one of the key components of uh, Marks of Fabric Warehouse. And um, Marks of Fabric Warehouse also comes with the ability to write SQL commands to it so you can interact with it like a normal database. So let's go and check it out how this works. So when you have Microsoft Fabric enabled in your environment, you would be able to go to Microsoft Fabric portal or to Power BI portal. In any of these, you can then navigate to the data warehouse part. In the data warehouse part is where you can, where you can go and create a new warehouse object. Now this can be created uh, using a sample warehouse, but you can just create it like this. I would call it sample warehouse four because I have created some already. Um, when you create it, you are in the warehouse explorer. The warehouse explorer is kind of similar to lake house explorer. If you watch my previous video about lake house, uh, so they are quite similar. This is creating that environment for us. One of the difference between lake house and warehouse is that lake house supports both unstructured data and structured data. The structured data is data tables, unstructured data are, are files such as like image files and things like that. In lake house, you can store those, but in warehouse, you, know, you can only store structured, structured data, which is data tables. 
they both, at the end of the day, they both store the data in one lake. Um, so this is my warehouse explorer environment. At the moment, I don't have any tables. If I go under this, my tables, like nothing is here. I can, however, add data to that. But you see, this is like a normal database system. I have schemas, tables, I can create stored procedures and things like that. Uh, and I can also set up the security in a way that I want. Now to add data into this, you have different methods. You can use a sample database, which is um, some better information data you can load into this. Uh, as a sample, you can create tables using T-SQL, like create table commands and things like that. One of the difference between warehouse and lakehouse is actually the SQL commands that you use here uh, can be used to write. Um, versus the SQL command you use in SQL endpoint of Lakehouse are on read only. So that is one of the differences in here. This is more like a database oriented uh, rather than Lakehouse, which is more data engineer oriented. You can also use a data pipeline to get data into here. For example, you can go and create a pipeline and I'm not really going to do all that process because it might take a little bit of time, but I'll show you a bit of that. Then I'll jump into a warehouse that I already created. So I can create a pipeline. I have a different video about what pipeline is. It is pretty much a data integration component. This pipeline can be just a simple copy data. I can say, for example, get data from a lake house, let's say. Uh, and then, uh, so connect the lake house. Let's say I have this lake house and I want the data of that to go to, to this warehouse and then uh, I can choose what tables I want to move into this uh, warehouse. For example, I can just select one of these, let's say customer table, uh, or you can select multiple of these. This will go create that metadata of that table for you. Map the columns between these two. This is the copy data activity in the data pipeline in data factory and you can proceed and load data into into there like if i proceed it will create that um, it will create that structure for me so this is for example mapping it to a dim customer table in the destination and then uh, i would be able to just create it and run it um, you can have a staging environment and things like that which is more like a data pipeline thing rather than a warehouse thing so and this is one of the methods that load data into a data warehouse now i would go to a um a data warehouse that i already created and there are some data in it i don't want to spend much time in creating the uh creating the or loading the data into the warehouse so here i already have a warehouse you see this is a warehouse i have created before now, when I click on this warehouse, this is a similar environment to what you have seen before. Here I have my um, warehouse explorer. These are my tables. Not all of them includes data, but some of them are. For example, dim customer has some data in it. Dim date has some data in it. So I can see the data in here. Um, I can also go and create a new stored procedure if I want to, create a view, create a function. I can even go ahead and write a SQL command in here. I can go and create a SQL query, like select, select star, or let's say top 10 star from team customer. And this would just work just like that. Now a SQL query that is just select, wasn't it called dim customer? I think it is case sensitive. So dim customer. Um, so um, um, one of the things is here is that you can run SQL queries that are read only like what you do in SQL endpoint of the lake house, but you can also write commands that are uh, inserting data as well, like select in select from another table, insert into this table. Like you would put insert the statement first, then the select statement after that, or create table or deleting data. All of that are possible here. Because it is a data warehouse, it gives you uh, ability to write and read versus the SQL endpoint of Lakehouse would give you a read only um, database system. So it's from the reading point of view, they are the same, but this gives you also the ability to write 
data into that. You can also create a visual query. A visual query is uh, basically empowered by Power Query Online. So I can create a, a query by just dragging and dropping tables into here and then applying some transformation. For example, let's say here I got um, the customer data table and let's say I'm only interested in first name, last name. I'll remove all other columns and then I want to merge these two into one. So I would go to transform. Um, I think we should have a, we should have a merge somehow I cannot find that option probably because I didn't leave any um, any columns as a key column so let's have this customer key and then these two that would perhaps give me more options so remove other columns again now this time I select first name hold the control last name yep now that looks better now transform um, trying to find this merge columns, which, yeah, here it is, finally. So merge columns, let's say I have a space between these two and I would call it full name. Mm, this particular transformation it, that isn't important. I just wanted to show you that the Power Query Editor Online is also a way that you can get the mm, data out of this and see that data. And you can also use this option to view the SQL code generated by this visual editor. This is the SQL code. Um, so obviously this only supports those transformation that supports query folding so that uh, it folds back to the warehouse. So these are a couple of ways of reading data from this, but uh, there's also another way that is using Power BI. So how the Power BI part of it works. When you create the warehouse, I'll go back to the workspace. When you create the warehouse, beside the warehouse, there will be also a data set created. You see, this is the data set that we have. This is automatically generated with the warehouse, the same way that Lakehouse works, the same way that Power BI Data Mart works. Um, and this data set is associated with that. To edit it, you can actually go back to your lake to your warehouse explorer in here. And uh, the model tab is actually where you can go and manage your model. You can create relationships, change the relationships, go and create a new measure. You can modify your model in here. It's like a data set editor online experience. Um, and, and once you've created that, you can then go to Power BI Desktop and get data from a warehouse. Or you can build your report directly online here as well. So while I'm waiting for the Power BI Desktop to open, I'll just create a new report in here so that you can see that I can create my report directly in online in this environment. This will connect to that data set live and then I can go and create a report let's say customer key and here English education and I would change this to a bar chart where customer key would be x-axis count of customer key and English education would be y-axis um, and here is the result so this is a report generated from there if I bring Power BI Desktop, in Power BI Desktop, I have the option to go to Data Hub, Data Hub, and then I would see Warehouse in here, which I can go and get data from that. Now, when you get data from Warehouse, you have two options. One option is that you can directly connect to the Warehouse, which in this case, so here is my Warehouse. If I connect directly to that, so I'm not really connecting directly to the Warehouse, I'm connecting to the data set associated with the Warehouse. Um, so it would be live connection to that data set. But if you want to really get data from that warehouse itself, then you can choose to connect to SQL endpoint. This part is exactly similar to how Lakehouse works or how, um, how the um, Power BI Data Mart parts of it work. So if you choose to connect to the SQL endpoint, then you have the option to 
choose what tables you want. After choosing that, you have the option to also say you want to import that data or have a direct query connection. If you import that data, you are building a new data set. Uh, if you are creating a direct query, still you are building a data set with a direct query connection. So you have basically all of these three options to connect to an existing data set, to create a new data set, either direct query or import data, as you can see over here. So back to my warehouse. Um, so if I save this report, let's say I would call it report 10, just a number that I don't have in my environment. Now, if I go back to, to here and find that report, now I can go and view the lineage of this report. This will show me where that report is coming from. So my report is coming from AdventureWorks warehouse, which is not really warehouse. This is the this is the data set, as you can see here, the data set associated with that warehouse. And that data set is coming from the warehouse. And the warehouse data might come from a different place. So, um, so in short, Warehouse uh, is a database system, high performant database system, which you can interact with it using SQL commands. You can write data to that using SQL commands. You can read data from it using SQL commands. Uh, but um, one of the things that makes it different from um, something such as Azure SQL database is that it is high performant. It's based on uh, Synapse data warehouse. Of course, uh, you might also wonder what is the difference between something like this with Power BI Data Mart or with Lakehouse, and I have videos about each of those separately as well. Now, this difference requires a video separately for itself, but just some short um, explanations here. For example, there are differences in features. For example, Warehouse enables you to write SQL commands that can read and write versus Lakehouse only supports SQL commands that can only read. Or Power BI Data Mart also the same thing. You can only read the data. Um, and Lakehouse supports uh, storage that you can store unstructured data and structured data, file and data tables, versus Data Warehouse is more for structured data. It's not a place for unstructured data. In terms of licensing, there would be also some differences. Like you can get Power BI Data Mart if you have uh, Power BI uh, Premium Per User license, but you wouldn't get Lakehouse or Warehouse um, using that PPU license. So there would be some differences on that. I will have a separate video focusing on all of those. But for now, I think this uh, few explanation makes it understanding that these are different objects. They might have some similarities, but they are different objects. I hope this video helped you to understand what is a warehouse. Go and try it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.